SLR plus braggart combination, the combination that I learned in school and the combination that I still use today. It's great at identifying if there's a space occupying lesion causing compression of the sciatic nerve, it's now radiating down the leg. Unfortunately, it has one flaw. And we've all seen this flaw. And unfortunately, when you exploit that flaw, you can find out that maybe someone has a peripheral neuropathy and not an actual radiculopathy. Let me introduce you to the extended straight leg raise. It solves two problems. The first is that <laughs> Uh, in, in some cases, we don't have a goniometer, we don't have an inclinometer next to us at all times. So the straight leg raise is only between 30 degrees and 70 degrees of hip flexion. If you're below that or you're above that, it turns out that other things could be at play. So when you're in that range and you find it at 30 degrees, you're not really sure if this is a positive test or a negative test. The ESLR solves that because whenever you reproduce symptoms, no matter what angle of hip flexion, it's okay, and then you add the differentiator in there. The second is this, is that the weakness in the SLR plus braggart is that when you have lower leg issues, when you have numbness, pain, tingling below the knee, because what happens when you actually dorsiflex the ankle, you're still activating those lower leg muscles and ligaments and joints and nerves and everything. You're still compressing and stretching those tissues. So unfortunately, if there's a problem that is below the knee, you're just gonna aggravate it anyway. So it's a very poor differentiator in figuring out is this a actual distal neuropathy versus a lumbar spine radiculopathy. So let me introduce you to the extended straight leg raise, which is gonna solve those two problems for us. It's gonna help us diagnose patients the first time every time and hopefully lead to a more satisfied patient. So let's do the ESLR test. The ESLR test looks exactly like the straight leg raise. Now, when the patient's down, you're picking up the person's leg and looking for reproduction of symptoms, or if they're already having symptoms, you're looking for an increase in 30% of their symptoms with a certain hip flexion angle. Once I hit that pain or increase in pain, numbness or tingling, it depends on where the symptoms are. Let's say it's in the upper thigh, in the posterior thigh. This is above the knee. When it's above the knee, you actually use a structural differentiator being just the Bracker's test. You're going to dorsiflex the ankle. So you're going to be stretching the structures below the knee and looking for a response above the knee. If it's positive, then you have a, an actual nerve symptom. You have nerve tension. However, if the patient has symptoms and the symptoms are below the knee, instead of using Bracker's test, now you're going to use hip interrotation. It's still gonna cause tension on the nerve without affecting the muscles and ligaments and structures below the knee. And now you can see if you have an increase in response. If you throw in some internal rotation and it aggravates that distal leg symptoms, this is a sciatic issue. This is a nerve tension issue. So we wanna make sure we treat it as such. I hope this is clear. The one thing we don't want to do is to treat someone for a sciatic issue, a nerve issue as a primary complaint, when there's actually something else going on. Maybe it's muscles, maybe it's ligaments. Take into consideration this. If you're treating somebody with posterior thigh pain, and it it's right along the buttock, maybe it goes all the way up into the iliac crest. Maybe it even comes up to the back. Maybe it drops down to the, to the knee. How do we know what it is? How do we know if it is a sciatic issue from the back? How do we know if it's a piriformis syndrome? How do we know if it's a glute med tendinosis? It's taking advantage of the right test for the right patient and to making sure that we lead that patient on the right pathway for that diagnosis. If you have questions on how to make those diagnoses for sciatica, the ESLR test is phenomenal. When it comes to piriformis syndrome, poking on an area, looking for symptom response, looking for the actual clinical signs. When it comes to glute med tendinosis, take a look at Cairo up. The hip lag sign and the hip extra rotation, deep rotation sign are phenomenal at making that diagnosis. So it's applying the right test to the right patient. Don't speed up your treatment, speed up your evaluation.